when did you first feel there's something not quite right with the way my mouth fits together? So my parents knew it, um, but I think for me what the hardest part was is when a family member told me I needed a nose job. I had no idea that my jaw was creating this perception, you know, of like what people were seeing. And I never realized what was really happening. I am Dana Kaplan and knew at five years old that I was going to be the best dressed kindergarten teacher. Um, and I pursued my dream and had a lot of hiccups in the way. Dana's story is one that is interesting because at a young age, she was seeing an orthodontist, was told of the need for surgery at that point, uh, but through a family-based decision, they chose not to do it because I think there was a lot of fear at that point of what would unfold. And they tried to camouflage or address an orthopedic bone diagnosis by moving the teeth. I was wearing all of these different gears, um, having marks on my face with hopefully the, you know, the, the products were gonna work and trying to, to find my own way and meeting all these different doctors in my life that were promising and over-promising and trying to help me with my bite and different things and I just kept going back to, I'm going to be the best dressed kindergarten teacher in the world. Kindergarten is going to be great. Kids are not going to have to go through what I'm going through. And so as a classroom educator, my eccentric <laughs> big vision came to life. And I actually was able to start working with families and kids on who am I and, and what do I want and who do I represent. And because of that piece that I was so hyper-focused on with knowing who am I, and how do I make friends and how do I connect with people? I then started to see how when children were coming into my class with either palette expanders or, you know, some kind of new glasses or something going on, that there was such an ease of creating a normalcy. I equate jaw surgery a lot about almost like building a house where you have a roof and a foundation and your, your roof needs to be over your foundation and if your roof is off, yes, you can live in that house because it's not about today. It, it's really about tomorrow. And as that house begins to wear and tear, how do you manage that house? Are you going to redo the structure or are you gonna to wanna to get organization in your roof over your foundation? And jaw surgery and skeletal imbalances are much the same. Because when you take a teenager who is imbalanced, at that point, they're not really gonna realize the situation of what goes on because they haven't used it enough. But as they go through their 20s and 30s, and all of a sudden they begin to wear and tear out of use, and that's ultimately what led her to get to the orthodontist. And the orthodontist says, Dana, you don't have a toothpaste problem, you have a skeletal problem, which is ultimately how she got to me. And we took care of her in a, in a team-based approach. He broke everything down. He made no guarantees, he made no promises. He told me absolutely not to get a nose job before I had my surgery. <laughs> um, to be around someone that accepts you and sees you and knows how scared you are and is ready to walk you through a journey that is so vulnerable, it's locked in my brain. It's a moment in time when I will never forget it. Dana then went to the operating room where we moved her jaws based upon patient-specific surgery for her. She was in the hospital one night, went home the next day. Her recovery was about five days. And once I can get the patient through the first five days, then the recovery really begins to, to take off and get them back in their work, quality of life, and with their families. There's no piece of me that ever has one ounce of regret to know that I get to joke around to say that I have Lego pieces in my mouth now and you know, and like do what I wanted to do my entire life and be the best dressed kindergarten teacher and get to talk about the uncomfortable things and help kids feel safe. And I'm living my dream. I'm literally living my dream. Being an educator is 
the most magical gift for me. And it's so wonderful when my students remember me and I'm that person for them. And it's so wonderful to know that I have a team that did that for me. And I hope that all of the people working with and for Stryker know that their impact is making such a greater impact, even if they don't know the patient. Like, people need to know the impact. And that's really what this is. So I am grateful that I trusted my intuition and that I did it. And I love my Lego pieces. <laughs> okay, so now what's next?